Hi there guys, here I am for another video, and this is fuckers, um, fuckers 31 days of creamy whore goodness, of creamy whore goodness, volume 2, volume 2, episode 2, episode 2, still got the two twos, anyways, in this video, we're going to be reviewing a Stir of Echoes, which is a 1999 R-rated 99-minute thriller horror mystery from director David Cope. Cope? Let's see what this guy has done. Has done. David Cope has been known, to, he's been a part of Mission Impossible, Spider-Man, Jurassic Park, and War of the Worlds. Thing that um yeah he written those the, oh, it, it, all that matters is his directorial efforts which he done a oh, premium rush ghost town um other than um, stir of echoes and premium rush nothing nothing really well known on, from his list of filmographies his filmography list. Yeah, and Stir of Echoes has also had a sequel called Stir of Echoes the Homecoming. Which Stir of Echoes Homecoming had has Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe. And I like I like Rob Lowe as I like Rob Lowe. I know I know more about Kevin Bacon than I know about Rob Lowe, but but I like Rob Lowe a hell of a lot better. He seems more calm. He seems more calm. And he doesn't seem like... He doesn't seem... You know... I still like Kevin Bacon. But I, was, I like, like Rob Lowe a little bit better. A little bit better. Anyways, Kevin Bacon stars in this. And Kevin Bacon... You know Kevin Bacon. He's been in some horror films like... Tremors 1, Tremors 1, and, um, Friday the 13th, Part 1, um, yeah, so he, yeah, he's been in some plenty of horror films, I don't think that, other than those two and this one, it is, um, only horror films that he's been in, and, um, the film, the film is that Kevin Bacon's character gets hypnotized, hypnotized, and once he gets hypnotized, um, hypnotized, he, he kind of gets like, um, he gets transmissions, he becomes fully aware, fully aware of, um, of what's coming in through people's lives, through people's, um, people's lives, and through a whole variety of things. He's just open to whatever comes with him. He gets some, some visuals. He gets some visuals. Um, after he gets his visual, his visuals. Um, um, after he gets his visuals transmitted to him, he there you get this girl, girl, who kidnappers Kevin Bacon and his beautiful wife, beautiful wife in this film, um, beautiful wife, and then after they kidnapped the, him and uh, his, him and his beautiful wife's baby, after, after the, what the girl suspects them of killing the, their, or somebody who's related to them, then they go on, then near the end, and then he becomes a bit of an asshole. He starts off like, actually, he's an asshole throughout the whole movie. Um, yeah. Then after that, and then after that, um, then after that, um, then after that, um, we see this flashback of these people killing this girl, and then, um, then we, after Kevin Bacon finds the dead body, the dead body of this girl, and then, um, for some strange reason, or due to convenience, due to convenience, the 
the one of the killers and their the one of the killers and their father come and kill them down and then you get the guy from the tran the father from the Transformers movies, um saves him. You think that he's committed suicide and then um it goes on to we goes on to see that the little kid the little kid that we spoke about um is getting the same transmissions. And to be honest, to be frank with you, I did not like this film much. The ending redeemed it. I liked the ending parts. The ending parts were actually well done. But um, the little kid, the little kid's um, acting, acting was just horrible. He went like, yeah, it just was like, that was horrible. That wasn't well done. He was like, leave me alone. Yeah, and especially the beginning part, and you're like, well, what the fuck is that up with that? I understand that he's a kid, and kids, you shouldn't be expecting acting, good acting talents, but come on. That shouldn't even be in the film. Uh, film, that kid's acting talent, acting, shouldn't be in this film. It's that bad. They should have picked some a little kid that actually can act. And Kevin... They try their best just to, they try their best to make the characters look like they actually gave a shit about each other, gave a shit about each other, but in all reality, in all reality, everybody in this film was just a bit of an asshole. Their, the, Kevin Bacon's tone with his wife, kind of an asshole, his wife's tones with him is an asshole, that, the, um, um, the hit, whenever the girl who hypnotizes um, hypnotizes Kevin Bacon's character has the most schmaltziest, schmaltziest fucking, um, fucking, um, fucking thing where, oh, fucking conversation with the wife and I think I'm like in a baseball scene and, um, I saw this yesterday and it just left my memory. The last few minutes of it weren't bad. It weren't bad. Um, the biggest compliment that I could give this film is that it reminded me of The Shining. It reminded me not a. I haven't even seen the um, Stephen King Stephen King TV show, TV show, but it kind of reminded me of The Shining, like like Kevin Bacon's character. It kind of comes off like a bit like um, Jack Nicholson's Jack Torrance, Jack Torrance in The Shining, and that's that's practically the only compliment that I could give this film. That I could give this film. Um, it had potential. It had potential. I'm not gonna say that it doesn't have potential, but it did. But it failed. the The only thing that was redeemable about it. It's the last, like the last thirty minutes or so, when it when you see um, Kevin Bacon find the dead body and then touches hands, interlocks hands, and then and then we see the flashback. It, that, yeah, it was that was good. That was good. It kind of broke broke from like the whatever crazy shit was going on in the film. Um, I honestly did not care for this film that uh, much. Um, it got a 7 out of 7 out of 10, just a plain Jane 7 out of 10, I don't understand why, I don't understand why, um, yeah, look at the films that it recommends, Shining a good film, I haven't even seen English or Heart, I've seen Vacancy, but I don't remember Vacancy, I've seen Rack, I've seen Devil, I've seen Gothica, I've seen all three of those, but I don't really remember them because they're not, especially Rack, Rack was a memorable Yeah, Child's Play, that's horrible. In case there's not a ring near below. No, I want to check out below. Saw, I've seen Saw, the ring, Case 439, and Child's Play, but I haven't seen Mirrors or Below. And I'm interested in seeing Below. And somebody even put this film on their brilliant list. Um, I disagree. I don't think anything of this film is that brilliant. Um, 
I'm kind of I'm I'm interested in seeing its sequel. That's the only thing that I could say is that I'm interested in seeing its sequel. But honestly, I would recommend that you um, skip Stir of Echoes. And um, I don't know what I'm gonna review next, but it'll be something. Thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.